Hello and welcome. Right, today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting up Google Authentication in an ASP.NET Core MVC application. So, first thing we need to do is we need to load up Google Cloud Platform. So, what we need to do first is create a new project in here. And what we'll do after that is it will give us the credentials, the OAuth credentials that we can use in our ASP.NET Core application. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to create a new project. So we need to just give it a name, call it round the code, and create. So that's just going ahead and setting up our new project. Takes a minute or two. So hopefully that's gone ahead and done that. Yes. Okay, so what we need to do now is now that we've done that, we can set up the OAuth credentials for it. So we go into APIs and services, go into credentials. So up here we go to create credentials, OAuth client ID. Now you can see here we've already got a message, so we need to configure the consent screen as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So for this, we're going to select external. Internal, if you're using it just for a company, you can set it up for a particular email address, I think. I haven't actually had a look at it, but it looks like it's just for users in your particular organization. But we want it for everyone, so we're going to go for external. So we need to give it a name. I'm going to call it round the code. Um, you've got the choice of uploading a logo, support email, and this is, we've got the scopes for the Google API. So by default, it exposes the email, the profile, and the open ID. If you click on add scope, we've got a couple of other scopes in there that we can use if we need to, but we don't need to on this. So we're just going to use that one. I'm going to have to refresh that because I can't see the cancel button. Bit of an issue there for Google. You have to start that again. So let's just put that in again. So yeah, we've got our scopes there. And yeah, you can fill out all these other details as well, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to click save for now. So we've got that. Now we can go back and do what we were actually doing is actually create the OAuth credentials now that we've set that up. We click on create credentials again. Click on OAuth client ID and now it's actually allowing us to set up the client credentials. So got many different application types here. We're going to select web application. We're going to call it, I oh, would just leave it at the default name of web client one. Now what you need to do with this is you need to set an authorized redirect for it. So we're going to do that. Basically we're going to be running our host on localhost colon 8888. So we need to put that in here and the root for it is signing Google. Now when we install the Google Authentication NuGet package into our application, it will basically root it automatically to signing Google. I believe that's how it works anyways. So we've added that in there and we click create. So as you can see on the screen there, it's presented us with a client ID and a client secret. We're going to have to use that in a minute. But that's everything set up in Google. So now we can head into our Visual Studio project, into our ASP.NET Core project. So the first thing we need to do is NuGet's already got a package that we can install for Google Authentication. We don't need to install it in the application. Well, we don't need to write it in the application because there's already a package installed for ASP.NET Core. So what we need to do is we need to open up Package Manager Console. We've already got it open at the moment, but if you haven't, you can go into Tools, NuGet Package Manager, NuGet Package Manager, and Package Manager Console. And this will load up this dialog down here. So we need to run a command line, insert package, install package even. And it's Microsoft ASP.NET Core Authentication.Google. So this takes a few moments to install. Okay, 
that's now included in our project. So we got here already, we've got an ASP.NET Core MVC application. We've already got a default controller here. This is just basically what comes when you actually create a new project in Visual Studio. This is just basically the default files that come with it. We'll be running that a bit later on in the demo. So let's start now configuring our application so we can actually use Google's, so we can actually authenticate using Google. So we're in the startup here. So what we need to do first is we need to add some lines in here. So we need to call the service add authentication. And we need to just set up a default scheme for that. So some of you might be using identity server or identity. We're not going to use that for this demo. We're just going to use the cookie authentication scheme just to show you exactly how it works. It might be slightly different if you're using something like identity server. So look at the instructions for that. But let's set up the default. It's going to be cookie authentication defaults authentication scheme. So now we're going to add, call the add cookies method. And what this is basically going to do is we're going to set a login path for this. So whenever there's a route that requires authentication, it will redirect to this particular path. And what we're going to do with this path is we're basically going to redirect it to Google, which I'll show you later on in the demo. But for now, we're going to just set it to account Google dash login. And finally, we just had our client ID and client key set up through Google. We now need to add them in. So we can do that by calling the add Google method. So I'm just going to add the options client ID and client secret. And then we're going to go back to our browser and actually get the credentials that appear on the screen. So we can click on that, that will get us our client ID, paste that in there like so. And then if we go back and get the client secret, copy that in. Okay, so that's all set up. So next thing we need to do is we just need to add a new app. We need to app use authentication down like so. Now what we want to do with the demo is that we want to authenticate everything in the home controller, but we're not going to do it for the home page. So what we're going to do first is at the controller, we're going to set an attribute called authorize. Now by default, that will mean that every method, every action in this controller is basically going to require authentication, but we're going to not allow it on the we're going to allow everyone to go onto the home page so we use the allow anonymous for there and that basically means that every time someone hits this route they will basically be able to get in without authenticating now the next thing we want to do is we're going to create a new controller and this will basically set up some particular routes where we redirect to google and redirect back so we're going to set up a new controller I'm going to create an empty controller and we're going to call it account controller. Okay, so we need to set some attributes up here. So we've set it so anyone can access these methods because with the Google login, you're going to need anonymous access to it otherwise you're not going to be able to log in are you? you're not going to be able to authenticate so we're going to create a google login i'm going to set the route to google login now if you remember back up here we set an options login path of account login that needs a semicolon there Basically, that's going to correspond to this route here. So whatever we do in here, basically, if someone visits a page that needs authenticating, it's going to redirect to this particular action here, this Google login action. So what we're going to do with this 
is we're going to set up a new authentication properties and then challenge it through Google. So we call the authentication, we call an instance of authentication properties. We can see it there, there it is. And what we can set in here is a redirect URI. So this will basically be the URL or the endpoint that gets redirected once Google's authenticated the user. So basically it will go to this endpoint here, the Google login, go off to Google. Once it's authenticated, it will go back to the URL we're just about to set up. Okay, so we set up an action of Google response. We're going to create that in a minute. The last thing we need to do with this is we need to return a challenge. We're going to pass in the properties and we're going to tell it to use Google authentication, Google's, yeah, Google's authentication scheme, which you get from the package that we just installed from NuGet. Add a semicolon there. Okay, so I'm going to set up the Google response now. So we need to make it asynchronous. So once again, we're going to set a route up here. Call it Google response. So that's going to correspond to account and Google response. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get all the data that Google returns back, all the scope data. So we can call authentication async and we're going to be getting it from the, the uh, cookie. So we have to cookie, cookie authentication defaults authentication scheme. And we're just going to get some of the claims out and we're going to output it into a JSON response so you can just see what sort of the data we're getting back from Google. So what we can do with that is we're going to call on our result the principal the identities So we're going to go into the claims and we're going to select a couple of options from it that we can display. So we're going to get the issuer and the organizer issuer. That should be from Google. The claim type, so that should be more sort of the scope type all being well. And then the claim value. And then we're just going to return it back in a JSON formatted response like so. So that's all the configuration that we've set up now. So the next thing to do is to run it and just see if it actually works. Okay, so it's successfully built. So we're running the application, the uh, console app there. Now this will be running on localhost 8888, all being well. As you can see, it's running there. So let's load that up and see what happens. Okay, so this is the home page. If we go back to our code now, go into the home controller, you can see we're allowing everyone in there. We've got the allow anonymous. Even so, we've got the authorize up that. That allow anonymous is basically overriding the authorize. But we've also got a privacy page here as well. And what should happen is that when we click on the privacy page, it should basically redirect to Google and tell us to log in. So let's go ahead and see if that's actually doing that. So we've got the privacy up there. And no, we're getting an error at the moment. So we're obviously having a few issues here. Let's have a look and see what's going on. Okay, so just let it stop. Let's see what's going on. Let's see what we haven't configured. Okay, so we've got the authentication scheme up there. Okay. 
Okay, so that's all working up there. Let's go into the home controller. Let's just check this is routing properly. Let's put that core MVC, that's fine. And yet the Google response is fine as well. Let's just check. Yeah, let's give it another run and just see what happens. saying that no authentication scheme was specified. Ah, yes, that's wrong. That should be default scheme rather than default authentication scheme. There we go. Hopefully that will now, now work. So this is, remember, on the privacy page. There we go. Right. So we're going to log in with my test account. Got test around the code.com, but you can log in with any account. So you can see here, it's gone back with our response. This is what it's outputting. So it's got some information about the name identifier. It looks like a unique ID, the name and given name and surname, and also the email address. So that's what we're sort of returning back. And now if we go back to our actual application, Click on the privacy policy page. Now it's managed to successfully authenticate it, which means it's all working. So I hope you enjoyed that. That's all I've got for you today. For more .NET articles, visit roundthecode.com. Subscribe and like to my YouTube channel, uh, roundthecode.com forward slash YouTube, and follow me on Twitter. It's at roundthecode. Thanks very much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.